Hey, it's Chase from On The Table Gaming, and today we're gonna talk about the core units available in the starter set for House Baratheon for the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game. The Baratheon Wardens are a foundational unit in the Baratheon Army. Although slow with only a movement speed of 4, their armor save of 3 plus and morale stat of 6 plus means they will be able to weather all but the most determined of assaults. As if that wasn't enough, their Warhammer attack does good damage at a 7, 5, and then a 3 on their final rank. But the real value of Warhammers comes from its ability, which allows them to weaken their opponent if their opponent rolls any ones on defense saves when taking an attack from this Warden unit. Now this adds an even higher level of defense for Baratheon units in that opponents will be even further challenged at pushing out damage onto this unit. But even then, that's not it. Target opening allows the Wardens to expend a weakened token as if it were a vulnerable token, allowing the unit to have tremendous versatility. If they need more defense, use your vulnerable token to force your opponent to reroll their attacks. And if you need to crack through heavy armor, make your opponent reroll their armor saves. There's even a chance for this synergy on its own to force your opponent to reroll their armor and potentially generate another weakened token if they roll a one. Now it's important to note that the effects are tabulated when all the rerolling is done. So if your opponent rolls a one and then you force them to reroll the die, the final dice roll is the one that counted towards generating the tokens. So and all of this is for five points. And to really make this unit difficult to remove, Adding a Master Warden attachment will allow them, as an order, to negate their opponent's bonuses for charging, flanking, or attacking from the rear. Depending on the opponent you are facing, this attachment could be placed in several of the Baratheon units to build a very effective defensive force. Now, coupled with a respectable 4-plus armor save and morale of 7-plus, the Baratheon Sentinels have the highest dice pool of any of the units in the Baratheon starter set, hitting with eight dice on a three plus at full strength. Now their double hammer ability has Sundering, and this is going to be great as a flanking unit, doing a ton of damage to even heavily armored units when they stack those bonuses for a completed flank or rear charge. Now at six points, you're paying for a slightly faster unit than the Baratheon Wardens, which will help get this unit into position for flank charges. You know, and it's all relative here, but this is going to be one of your, your hammer, literal hammer units uh, as it, when it comes to pushing out damage. Now the Stag Knights are a workhorse of a unit. Aptly named Unwavering Fury, their attack profile never goes down, allowing them to hit on 3 plus at 7 dice, whether they are at full strength or down to their last rank. Additionally, their attack allows them to select one of the following bonuses for each of its destroyed ranks. With the option to attack with Critical Blow, Sundering, or Vicious, skillful battlefield commanders will be able to adapt to the changes in the conflict to seize opportunity for victory. And with the addition of a Stag Knight Noble, you can utilize their Reckless Vengeance ability to get a free attack, suffering two wounds, and then on your activation, add the bonuses to your attack from the ranks you lost to hit, with the additional abilities of Unwavering Fury. At eight points, they are certainly venturing into elite unit territory, and you're gonna to wanna to play tactically around them to ensure that they are properly supported with tactics cards and other units to make sure that you know, you're really getting the most of their potential. Now let's take a look at some NCUs. Now as an NCU, Shira Errol, the Lady of Haystack Hall, allows you to stack an additional benefit when you claim the Tactics or Wealth Zone on the Tactics board. And, while this may not seem like such a big deal, in a faction that can benefit tremendously from smart token use, this is an incredibly useful ability. Uh, and this is gonna help you keep your units fighting at their fullest capabilities, regardless of the situation. While Alistair Florence shifting loyalties will allow you to twice per game switch Alistair's place on the tactics board, either by moving to an unclaimed zone or by removing an NCU already claiming a zone and replacing that space with your own Alistair NCU himself. This is an amazing ability. And this is gonna give you so much flexibility. Uh, consider, for example, that maybe you wanna get the tactics zone so you can activate some tactics cards later on, but right now it's advantageous to take the melee attack zone and get a free hit in. You get your free attack, you take the melee attack tactic zone, 
And now you can spend his order and switch over to that tactic zone. It also means you cannot be shut out and blocked from using your tactic abilities. So, so if someone is claiming zones to make it so you can't play your tactics cards or pull off certain combos, you can use Alistair Florence orders to replace that zone and get yourself back in the game. As for Stannis Baratheon, his critical blow ability is a strong addition to any unit in the starter set. In the Wardens, you have a resilient unit that could benefit from his damage bonus. In the Sentinels, you have a unit that will have an increased dice pool to roll potential critical blows, or put them in the Stagnites and you have a unit that will be freed up to select other benefits on their attack due to Stannis' native critical blow ability. And that's not even mentioning that not being able to gain condition tokens is an amazing boost to a unit. On the other hand, Renly Baratheon's boldness and courage ability allow him to count as having an extra rank and, if your unit already has full ranks, it hits with plus two attack dice. Furthermore, the unit he's in gains the emboldened keyword, which gives other units at short range a plus one bonus to their morale stat. Morale is a huge part of A Song of Ice and Fire, the miniatures game, and that's great in its own, but this is gonna be even better with some of Renly's cards, which trigger off of morale. So, like Stannis, placing Renly in any unit will give it a significant advantage, and you're gonna need to make the choice of whether you wanna make a unit more well-rounded, or if you wanna double down on a unit's strengths. We're gonna go over and talk about some of the tactics cards in a future video and some of the combinations you might see there, but in the meantime, which of the Baratheon units do you like the most, and, for everyone else, how do you plan on countering them on the battlefield? Let me know in the comments below, and in the meantime, I hope you get your miniatures on the table.